Machloikas. It is a word that conjures up a great deal of emotion within the heart. Machloikas. It means strife, division, argument. It's something that breaks communities apart. It splits families. It's so negative. Our sages have spoken against Machloikas time and time and time again. And unfortunately, it's something that just continues within the Jewish people. Even today, we see the Jewish world split about by Machloikas. There's this group and this camp, and that one doesn't speak to this one, and this one doesn't speak to that one. It's the most terrible thing. What, if you like, is the root of Machloikas? What was the most famous Machloikas argument that is mentioned in the Tanakh, in the Bible? And that must be the Machloikas of Korach. Korach, who was a cousin of Moshe Rabbeinu, our teacher Moses. And he led a rebellion against Moses. What was Korach's issue? What was he trying to get at? Well, our sages tell us that Korach believed, because of his rank and his station and his power within his family, he was a member of the sub-tribe of Kahat within the tribe of the Levium, that he would be appointed the chief. But he was passed over for the position. It was given to a much younger cousin, and he couldn't deal with this. But of course, it would be petty to come out and to say, why was I left out of the position? So instead, he came up with a whole new philosophy against Moses. And he said to Moses, why do we need a Kohen Gadol? Why do we need a high priest? Why do the Jewish people need a re representative? Aren't we all holy? Didn't we all hear at Mount Sinai God speaking to us, saying the words of the Ten Commandments? And he led a rebellion that consisted of some of the leading people, some of the sages in the times of Moses against Moses. Moses, on his part, tried his best to make sure that the machloket would go away, that it would end, that the argument that was splitting apart the Jewish people would come to a stop. He tried to buy for time. He tried to negotiate with the leaders of the machloket, of the argument. But it was all to no avail. And miraculously, God caused an earthquake to occur, and Korach and his followers were all swept up, including even young children. What is it about Machloikas? What is it about argument that forces us, that drives us to do things that are totally irrational and totally illogical? That in this case, entire families were lost, and that God had to bring an end to it in a miraculous mean. And in fact, the Torah tells us, You should not be like Korach and his followers and his congregation who rebelled against Moses. And indeed, the Talmud tells us that this is a negative commandment. God is telling us, you may not be like Korach. You may not instigate an argument and you may not feed the fire, fuel the fire of argument. If there is an existing argument, stay out of it. Don't get involved. It's not your business. And yet we see this again, time and time again, that people come and they fuel the fire of machloikas and strife and division. Instead, a person should either stay out of it or try his very best to bring peace between the parties. But there is another reading of that phrase, You may not be like Korach and his congregation. And Rav Chaim Shmulevitz, the famed Rosh Hashiva of the Mir Yeshiva, doesn't read it as a command, but a statement of fact. There will never again be an argument like Korach and his followers. What does this mean? In every argument, there are two sides. And in every argument, one side has got their opinion and the other side has got their opinion. And it's highly possible, in fact, in every single case, that this side has a point to what they're saying. And that side has a point to what they're saying. Perhaps it's not exactly balanced. Perhaps one side is 90% right and the other side is 10% right. Or 60% and 40%. And therefore the Torah has to tell us that never again will there be a case like Korach where one side was 100% right and one side was 100% wrong. That was the only case. Moshe was entirely correct. Korach was entirely wrong. But in every other argument, the other side will have a point. And therefore, the lesson to us is to listen to that person. Maybe they are saying something that is correct. And maybe we should stand down 
and not try to prove our point or stand firm on the principle. People will stand firm on the principle, often to their detriment. And machloket can have terrible, terrible consequences. The Chofetz Chaim, the famous Rabbi Yisrael Mer HaKohen Kagan of Lithuania, wrote extensively about the power of machloket, the negative power of argument and strife. He dedicated chapters to this topic. And in one chapter he tells us that what drives a person to continue in argument and strife is his desire for nitzachon, for victory. I have to be right. Perhaps he knows in his heart of hearts that his position is not really a strong position, but he has to be right at all costs. And the following story is recorded as having happened in the small town of Radin, where the Chofetz Chaim, Rabbi Kagan, lived. There were two families, one family, that were involved in a terrible machlokas, a terrible argument, a terrible strife. And the two would not meet, they would not come to terms. And everybody tried to assist and to make sure that this machlokas would end. And then something tragic started to occur. Children in both sides of the family began to die of unnatural causes. And this was more than the elderly sage, the Chofetz Chaim, could bear. And he came to one of the sides and he said to this man, look what's happening. Look at what Machloikas is causing. It's causing young children to die. In the same way that in the argument with Korach and Moshe, young children in those families that rebelled against Moses died. Do you want this to continue happening? And this man looked at the elderly sage and said to him, Rebbe, Rabbi, I will bury every single one of my children, but I will be right at the end of this argument. Ad Kedekach, it can go until that level that a person can be pushed to bury his entire family as long as he is right. And that's what a person has to let go of. They have to let go of that ego. They have to be able to say, perhaps I was wrong, to go to the other party and apologize, even perhaps if they weren't the one who started the Machlokes. Because it doesn't help to say, well, you have to apologize to me first, because then nothing's going to happen. And our sages illustrate this with a beautiful story. There was once a famine in the land of Israel. There was no rain whatsoever. And the sages set up days of fasts to petition God to please cause rain to fall within the country. And the great Rebbe Eliezer was called to lead these prayers. And he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. And absolutely no rain came. And then Rebbe Akiva came forward and he prayed. In fact, he said the famous words, Avinu Malkeinu, our father, our king, we have sinned before you. Our father, our king, we have no one but you. Please assist us at this time. And the rain began to fall. That is the, the source of that prayer, Avinu Malkeinu, our father, our king. And people now began to speak about Rebbe Eliezer. They said, Rebbe Eliezer is not as great as Rebbe Akiva. Rebbe Eliezer prayed and rain didn't come. Rebbe Akiva prayed and rain came. And a heavenly voice came out and said, it's not true. Rebbe Eliezer is indeed a very great person. But there is a difference between Rebbe Eliezer and Rebbe Akiva. Rebbe Eliezer is not forgiving of insults made against him. But Rebbe Akiva is a vatran. He lets things go. He is forgiving of insults made against his person. And if you are prepared to forgive insults made against you, God will be prepared to forgive what you have done to Him. And that's really the lesson of Machloikas. Lo korach. Don't be like Korach. Don't stand firm on that principle. I'm doing it for the principle. I have to be right. Sometimes you have to realize that, yes, you may be right. But in order for peace to come about, you have to be forgiven. You have to turn to that other person and say, I'm sorry. And no person was ever diminished by saying that they're sorry. Often a, a person will believe that it's a weakness, they'll be showing weakness, but this is not true. It's actually a strength. When your opponent sees that you're prepared to say sorry, you actually come out as the better person. So please God, going forward, there should be much less machloikas, strife and division amongst the Jewish people. And we pray that God who makes peace up above should make peace down below, Val Kul Yisrael and the entire Jewish people. And let us say, Amen.